Good afternoon and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at Market Site, we have Gabor Gerbax. He's the Director of Digital Asset Strategies over at Vanak MVIS with his 2019 Cryptocurrency Global Outlook. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy New Year. It's great to have you back in studio with me. Now for 2019, it's going to be slow but steady progress for cryptocurrency. Yes, great to be back, Jill. And uh, yes, 2019 is the year I expect this year to be slow and steady uh, from the progress front uh, in crypto. So the the three areas that I'm monitoring uh, related to crypto and digital assets uh, is market structure developments, uh, mergers and acquisition, as well as a, a, a few uh, big picture items. And um, from uh, from the market structure development front, I would uh, say that there is. Um, Market structure, I expect market structures to be, become more robust and develop in 2019. I'm paying particular attention to developments in, in custody, uh, surveillance programs, and uh, the uh, developments in, in 2.0, so crypto 2.0 products such as uh, futures contracts and ETFs. Right. It sounds exciting for investors because those seem to be the key words that we've been looking for over the past four to five years as digital assets has come more to the forefront understanding custodialship, understanding how to regulate the business, becoming more transparent. So it seems as if the market structure is really key here to make it a little bit more mainstream. Yes, so uh, investors do not uh, accept cut corners uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in digital asset market structure. So uh, you know they, they, they expect large custodians to come to market. They expect their assets to be safe. They expect uh, no non-nefarious activities uh, on market, so surveillance again is is, is key to uh, this industry. And uh, frankly, most of the investors want to invest conveniently and in systems they are used to. So right now, it's fairly hard to uh, to invest in digital assets. So I'm, I'm looking for uh, solutions uh, that that make it easier to invest. Right, and I think if investors are patient, it will eventually happen, be regulated properly, and then they'll have the access just as easy as they do with traditional asset classes. And part of that will come through a healthy M and A market. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, I, Again, for 2019, uh, mergers and acquisitions are, are something that I am personally looking at, and uh, I think on the uh, on the merger fronts from the from the crypto e ecosystem, we'll see a number of what I call mergers of equals. So some crypto companies will find that the the goal that they're going after is going to be easier to achieve. So they'll find some ways to merge or raise capital together, and perhaps more interestingly uh, to to our audience, uh, the the acquisition front will see a number of uh, financial services companies and large tech companies uh, to acquire digital assets or crypto companies to, to, to increase their offering. So overall, I think the, the, the IPO channel will widen. And uh, in 2019, there's, uh, we may see potentially a, a fir uh, the f a first large IPO. So in 2018, there have been some kind of filings in, in Asia. Uh, and I think we'll see some North American happenings as well in mm -hmm. 2019. Well, it sounds IPO like front. a win-win for the market because if you have the large financial institutions with the scalability, they can acquire the technology and, and the talent behind it without having trying to figure it out on their own. But it'd be interesting to see if the companies that get acquired, would they accept digital assets as their form of payment for the company? Yeah, I, I think right now there most of the uh, the acquirers are looking for equity stakes. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I would love if you know Bitcoin was accepted as, as a form of uh, of payment. Uh, so we'll, we'll see uh, where where this uh, space is going to develop. You never know as the M&A market continues to evolve. That could. Possi that's a very good possibility. Exactly, and uh, just to kind of add to it a little bit, I think this is very healthy for the digital asset markets because after large declines in, in, in equity uh, markets, for instance, generally there's a lot of M&A uh, equity then in the small and mid-cap space. So this is healthy, and, and this follows, follows books uh, that we know uh, in the M&A space. All right, and let's wrap it up with the big picture because this seems to be the most exciting part of your 2019 outlook. Yes, so uh, the big picture items that I'm focusing on is, let's start with payments. So I think uh, if uh, digital assets do not succeed on the payments front, I believe digital assets are failed. So we'll see, uh, We'll see uh, some developments in the payment space because the big problems that digital assets try to solve uh, has applicability in the payment space. So one example that uh, is recently very encouraging uh, for me uh, is MasterCard. And so MasterCard just announced yesterday they dropped MasterCard from uh, their logo in order to de-emphasize card in their offering, recognizing that payment technologies are, are developing and I do think that um, digital assets and some companies that are focused on payments have a space uh, and have a 
have a, an interesting uh, path uh, in, in payments. The other uh, front that I'm focusing on from, for big picture items is uh, what different sovereigns and nations do uh, on the digital asset fronts. Uh, just at the end of uh, last year, the IMF has green-lighted uh, eight nations uh, to launch a national uh, cryptocurrency. And those nations are you know, Russia, uh, Venezuela, Canada, and some larger countries, mm -hmm. and then some smaller on the list as well. So I think, uh, and again, this is just my personal view, in uh, 2019, we'll see one or two G20 nations emerge as what I call crypto-friendly nations. So definitely a lot to look forward to. And the, uh, uh, so the three key items and, and that I focus on my 2019 outlook is market structure changes, uh, mergers and acquisitions, and among the big picture items, uh, it is payments and uh, what G20 nations will do uh, in, in developing their digital assets strategy. All right, Gabor, thank you, as always, for joining me. One of my favorite conversations to have. We look forward to meeting with you throughout 2019. Yep. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.